Hey gang, thank you for joining me today. Merry Christmas to you all. Look at there, there's my own, my own mug, my own Christmas mug with my name on it. <laughs> now isn't that, isn't that spatial? <laughs> that's what, that's what sculptors should say about their work all the time. Now isn't that spatial? <laughs> Sorry. Hey, my name's Dan. <laughs> Maybe you know that. And uh, yay, it's good to be back online. Good to be back to another daily art, daily art adventure. <laughs> I had to read it. See, what do we call, call these again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really getting rusty. Woo! <laughs> anyway, this is Daily Art Adventure number 1003, and I'm calling it Doing a, a, a Scenic Portrait, because I didn't know what else to call it. Okay, so it's, it's a commission piece. It's a portrait for a wonderful person. <laughs> All of my commission pieces are for wonderful people, just in case you wondered. <laughs> and uh, let me show you what I'm doing. So this really is a particularly poignant and sweet job. Turn on the lights as much as I can. There we go. All right. So this is a, as I said, poignant commission. It's going to be done in charcoal. This is a composite that I put together from photographs. And uh, I'm doing, I'm doing the job for the mother of these two boys, and indirectly for her ex. <laughs> so you know, um, the sad story is this son died this past year, and uh, so that's why he is a spirit up in the sky. <laughs> that's. that's that's as much as so I've I've gone back and forth with her several times to try to make sure that I've got the right idea and so on and so forth. And we went through several different iterations and so forth. So I'm finally ready to do get to work on this illustration, which has been waiting patiently in the background for a couple weeks now. All right. So a little explanation of my technique. I have here a light table. As you can see, I know it looks terrible to you guys. Um, and I've taped to the back of it a, a print, an exaggerated contrast print, by the way. And, and again, forgive me, I know you guys can, can, if I do this, you can see it. So once again, there's the image. And this is... A, you know, a lot of young men, a proud moment where they took down. That looks like a big buck to me. That does not look like, I should have asked her, that does not look like a North Carolina deer. That looks like a Michigan deer. Be that as it may. Here, here's a color version. Here's what it looked like before I turned it into uh, black and white. And here's what her son, oh, tragic story, heartbreaking story. Can't imagine. Anyway, Lisa, if you watch this, we love you. We bless you. Pray for you for peace and joy in the midst of this. So I'm, I'm part of the healing process, no doubt. All right, let's zoom in here so you're not getting blasted. As you see, I've got my glove on, ready to go to, uh, so that I don't, I wear a glove just again to review. It's not to protect my hand <laughs> from the dangerous charcoal. I'm sorry for chuckling, but some people actually wonder that. No, no, no. The purpose of the glove is to protect the paper from the oils in my hand. Thus, that's why these three working fingers are open, and I, you know, cut those off and left this here, so that when my whenever my hand is in contact with a drawing surface for a long time, oil painting, it's never in contact with the canvas, right? So I, I don't wear a glove like this for oil painting, but for drawing, where my hand's resting on the paper. The purpose of it there is, hello, Michael. I am very well. Thank you indeed. All right. I'm actually going to brighten this. I have two settings on this antique light table. And I have here my uh, 
large charcoal kit. And I'm going to start, let me see if I can do that without my head being terribly in your way. I think I can do this. Yeah, I can barely see this young man's eyeballs. All right, so obviously I, I haven't said anything yet about, have I, about cheating, quote unquote, about using extreme photomechanical measures to capture this image. So the first thing that should be very obvious to you <laughs> is that I'm using extreme photomechanical measures. And boy, I've, I've, I've gone through this so many times. Forgive me, I, I really don't want to go through it again, but just in case there's anybody new watching. So working in this manner, what I used to call cheating, for years and years I called it cheating. Then one of you, one of my viewers, finally convinced me that I was potentially damaging people's art journey career by using a negative word. So I now call it photomechanical or technical tricks, measures for capturing an image. And here's what I usually say about that. Doing this, using photomechanical tricks, is completely legal, okay? No shame. Do it, do it, do it if you need to. So there's no shame, but there is, in fact, consequences of using the, this kind of trick for capturing a likeness. And the consequence is that your drawing skills, not only do they not grow as fast as they ought to, you can actually make your drawing skills go in reverse. So again, feel free to do it. <laughs> no shame, but, <laughs> but there's consequences. Okay, if you always use a grid or tracing like I'm doing here, if you always use uh, measuring and so on and so forth, then your drawing skills will go downhill, right? So why am I doing it today? Well, the same reason I would say to you, you do it. When time is of the essence, when the task at hand is to, is to get a job done and get paid for it, when that's the pri priority, then to heck with doing it the hard way and just knock it out. So this is, this is the way illustrators work. Almost all illustrators around the world that do representational stuff. This is what they do. They copy, they cheat, they use photo mechanical, technical tricks and devices. And that's exactly where I find myself today. Today, this is uh, this illustration, if you will, has to be done today. And of course, it has to be, it's a commission, so it has to be done right. I don't have time to, this is a Christmas gift <laughs> from, from uh, you know, my client to her son and ex. I'm not sure exactly, not my job to know all the details, but anyway, it's a Christmas gift. So, since it's only three days till Christmas, it's time to <laughs> it's time to get her done. Fair enough. So that's when you use tricks. Now and again, some of you, again, I, I forgive me. I've given this lecture so many times, but just in case there's anybody new, if you're an early journey painter and you're trying to learn how to draw stuff. You might make yourself a little bit schizophrenic for a while. Make yourself two separate people. One person is going to get the job done. One of your inner art, your inner artists, is there just to get the job done. 
the other inner artist is there to learn how to become a better artist. So the, the one who's there to learn should do everything the hard way and should focus, by the way, primarily on drawing, sketching, drawing, sketching, drawing, sketching, drawing, with no photomechanical tips or tricks at all. All right? That's one. That's one of your inner art persons. Then your other art person, perhaps the one that needs to pay the bills if you're working as an artist or would like to sell art. The other artist is, is all business to heck with cheating, to heck with whatever. Just do it. Do it, do it, do it. Does that make sense? So I, I do recommend a, a two-track approach to growing in your art career. One of your tracks is learning how to draw. The other track is just get the job done. All right, fair enough. Whew, there, now let's get off of that. And so today, I, at the moment, I'm operating, obviously, in the just get the job done track. And I'm, I'm afraid that a lot of what I'm doing is not very exciting looking because I'm assuming you can barely see what I'm drawing. I'm using a, a hard charcoal pencil. Charcoal pencils come essentially in four grades, hard, medium, soft, and extra soft. And when, when a charcoal pencil is called hard, it compares to roughly to a graphite pencil um, extra soft or a number a number six B graphite pencil. Do you understand? Because charcoal is all charcoal is much softer than any um, graphite. So just in case you're not a aficionado or an expert at charcoal and graph the difference between. So when I say this is a hard charcoal pencil, again it's soft compared to graphite but hard compared to uh, other, uh, to graphite. Did I say that right? It's, it's hard compared to charcoal, soft compared to graphite. I'm still having a hard time. And I, I have my... Uh, one photograph off to the, here to the, to the side, one print, and even a, a color version of it if I so desire. So here, by the way, I, mean, I guess I am going to talk a little bit more about quote-unquote cheating <laughs> or photomechanical tips and tricks that as much as you use all these tricks, there is still plenty of opportunity for you to exercise you need to exercise drawing skills. So throw that reality into the whole mix. No matter how much you cheat, quote unquote, no matter how much you use these tips, there still comes a point when you have to use plain old fashioned drawing artistic skill because there's always something like right now, it's the fact that I can't see, I can see the big stuff but I can't see um, all the details. Through this paper. So once again, I'm using hard charcoal pencil. So I'm hoping that um, the lines I'm putting down right now will stay visible when I begin doing work on top of this. So I'm going to do, this is going to be a fairly tight uh, charcoal drawing. That is to say, it's not going to be the sketchy kind of charcoal, which I, I do a lot of both. I do sketchy and I do tight or realistic. And this is going to be more toward the tight and realistic because of course, it's supposed to be a portrait of these two young men and one father. And uh, therefore, 
I, I need to capture a likeness. And in order to capture a likeness at the size that the illustration is going to have to be pretty tight. Do you catch my the, the idea there? Hello, Utah Rail Surfer. Hey, Mark. <laughs> well, my friend, uh, we might, our our communications must be passing in the night. I keep I keep e emailing you back with prices and where to pay for, um, how to pay for those paintings. And I'm so sorry. I'm, I'd be delighted to sell you the one you're interested in, which you've shown me several times. Be delighted. And I'm glad to connect. Mark, you, you told me one time what your online name was, and I forgot it. So Utah Rail Surfer. Got it. And I was right. You're out west somewhere. <laughs> that's, all I could, that's all I could remember. <laughs> so, yeah, by all means, if you have you not gotten my, my messages about how to pay me, Apologies to the uh, vegans among us, <laughs> the political ones, who are against all forms of hunting and killing. Well, not my problem. <laughs> if people hadn't hunted and killed, you wouldn't be here anyway. <laughs> and you you have the right to, to not kill your food. I, I honor that. Um, yes, I'm going to lower the horizon in this scene. Glad, I'm glad I remembered that at the last minute. All right, now, some of these major trees. I'm not going to, to try to capture every single tree accurately, but the major ones I will, because, of course, I, I want this scene to look as though it's the same scene as the photograph, right? So the general pattern of the trees I want to want to maintain, retain. You know, I just realized too. I need to um, mask. I didn't I didn't do this earlier. Sorry, a little bit of um, technical business. Because I, I, the uh, my client is ordering, paying for an eight by ten drawing. So I'm giving her exactly eight by ten inches, but I'm doing it on uh, ten by twelve. Is that right? Paper. It's more than twelve inches. Anyway, I don't, I'm not going to, she won't complain, she gets one slightly larger. But I want to mask it so that I can uh, make my charcoal mess all over the surface of this paper and still end up with a nice, sharp, clean edge. 
It just really just a marketing ploy. Um, stuff looks better when it looks better. <laughs> Would you like to hear that again? Stuff looks better when it looks better. So having this nice sharp clean edge around the drawing just looks professional. I like the look and it looks artistic too in my opinion. So that's what I'm doing. I should have done it before now, just forgot until now. All right, let's do a few more of these trees and then I'm anxious to get on to the more fun aspects. One of the things I would love to show whoever's interested is just some of the uh, ins and outs, if you will, of charcoal, the charcoal medium. Let me stop there for now. Turn off all my back lights. Turn on my front lights now. Let's see how that looks. Can you even see it? Barely. Let me pick it up so you can see that there really are lines there. Uh, so, yes, I've got a lot of drawing to do. Let me do a little bit more now, just drawing by sight, drawing the old-fashioned way. As I said there, you still end up with lots of need for plain old-fashioned drawing skill. And that's why I strongly recommend, whenever you can, learn how to draw. Oh, let's have a sip of my tea. That's what it's here for. Indra Neal says to me, or says to everybody, Hey, Michael, um, I'll get back to Indra Neal in a minute. How long are you going to be on? Um, yeah, today. That's right. Not tonight at your house. T today at my house. Um, I would think I'll be here another hour, hour and a half, a couple hours total, probably. All right. So Indra Neal. Indra Neal, when I may be mispronounced, Biswas says, Stop tracing and start learning how to draw freehand. <laughs> so I don't I don't know if she's talking to me. I don't know if she's preaching at me or if she's uh, he I, I'm saying she I think it's a she or if she's simply paraphrasing me quoting me. <laughs> Indra Neil, I don't know if you're still watching or not but <laughs> you've come in in the middle of a conversation and your comments are sweetly um, uh, echoing what I say all the time. I say it so much I get tired of saying it. Yes, indeed. Stop tracing and learn how to draw free hint. I'm not going to repeat everything I just said because <clears throat> I just said it. So <laughs> thank you for Thank you. Affirming my my words. <laughs> the rest of you, shape up. Do what Indra Neal says. <laughs> Stop tracing and learn how to draw freehand. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, for what it's worth, uh, drawing freehand really is a lot more fun for me because it's a challenge. It, it's hard work, and hard work, in a sense, feels good to your brain. It feels like a good workout, physical workout. Um, but there are times when all that has to come second, and the job at hand today is get the dang thing done. Get her done, get her done, get her done, fast, quickly. And it has to be right, because it's a commission. So, all right. <laughs> Indra Neal, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know if you're still with us or not, but <laughs> if you wonder what I'm talking about, just go back and listen to my broadcast. You'll go, oh, he already said that, didn't he? Part of what we're dealing with here when I when I talk to people is is the difference. Well, you know what? I need to get more of his eyes. Hang on. It's between a, a, a hobby painter, someone who's just doing this for fun, and someone who's doing it for a living, like myself. Nope, I am not seeing any more. Wow. 
So I have to draw here freehand. I don't have any choice. And having said, as I just did, that I'm doing this as for a living, some of you are going, wait a minute. <laughs> yes. No, my career, much to my shock and, and amazement and delight, I will tell you, changed about three months ago. I've been a full, 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 full-time artist for 16 years, working my buns off. <laughs> you ought to see me walk around with no buns. It's quite the sight. <laughs> um, and all of a sudden I find myself back in the role of shepherd teacher. How about that? Pastoral shepherd, spiritual shepherd teacher, which is, has always been more my true identity anyway. So, uh, so we have an, uh, people who are paying our bills again, much, much. We didn't see that coming at all. Did not see that coming. All right. So now <laughs> that looks terrible. I'll, I'll work on it. All right, so here is overall the, the image I'm working for. Working toward, I should say. And I want to go ahead and tackle this, this tree stuff. And there are many different ways to do that. Let me show some of my options to you. I don't even know which one I'm going to pick yet. Um, one is to use big fat charcoal, either, um, I guess this is all vine charcoal. Yeah, soft gray-ish charcoal, this real thick stick of it. Then there is, oh, I don't have anything. How about that? Charcoal sticks, the black stuff. Let me show you what I mean. I've got some somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, this kind of thing. Some of you would call that charcoal, which of course it is, but that's just one stuff. That might be what I use. Um, then I have blending stubs. This is chamois for blending and slightly erasing. So I have a whole bunch of erasing tools. As you can see, I've just to make my or my equipment more organized. I put them all in separate Ziploc bags. That was a big help a couple months ago when I did that. Um, I also have charcoal powder. So if I brush on the charcoal powder, this would be the lightest. By the way, I'm working on Bristol board, single ply Bristol board here. Um, all right, made up my mind. I'm going to use here's another official container of willow charcoal. This is called. This is the the most traditional charcoal, the stuff that uh, in years, maybe even centuries past, um, oil painters would use to draw lines on their canvas. Right. I'm not going to use that because my fingers will get too dirty. So let me show you. We have we have tricks around here. Somewhere here I have a vine charcoal holder. Oh yeah, here's my favorite. I have a modern one around here too, but this is my favorite. This is this is an antique. I, I inherited this from some it looks to me like from about the mid early to mid 20th century. And what this allows me to do is find a piece of vine charcoal that's already of manageable length like this okay and I can slide this sleeve down 
put this in here, slide the sleeve back up, and the charcoal is held firmly in the end of that brass handle. Good. Isn't that clever? They, do, they still make these kinds of, they are not made of brass anymore, but um, they, those such things are still, in fact, manufactured and sold at art supply stores. You can find them. All right, so, and that allows me to do this. Now, this, this stuff creates quite a bit of dust, so I'm not pressing down hard because that would create even more dust. And I'm, I'm going to cover the entire area. Again, let me, let me pull up my photograph. Do you see how the, the f trees in the background are generally darker than the foreground? Right, there's light up here, but this is dark. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna achieve that uh, lightness by erasing. I'm going to do a lot of erasing on this project, not using not using an eraser to correct mistakes. Quite the contrary, I'm going to use uh, erasers. I'm going to draw with erasers. I'm going to use the erasers to draw with. And here's why I did my first drawing with a hard charcoal pencil because I believe, I sure hope I'm right, <laughs> I think that um, the hard charcoal lines will remain even though I'm going to rub on top of them a considerable amount. All right, bear with me just a minute, almost finished. Just. Covering this whole upper area again with vine charcoal, uh, sometimes called willow charcoal. You saw a minute ago on that package. What sets the vine charcoal apart is that there there are no chemical additives. Many times, like in the charcoal black charcoal sticks I showed you a few minutes ago, they have to use a binder. They have to add something to the water, to the mix, to make it dry and hold together. And, and uh, those binders, um, you know, if that adds stuff to the charcoal, which oil painters have always been leery, rightfully so, about uh, putting under their oil paints. So that's why vine charcoal is preferred for, I have a video that quite a few people have seen I think it's called doing a charcoal drawing underneath an oil painting. So this is a piece of, well, in America, what we call Kleenex, which is actually a brand name, but so the gener generic name would be tissue. It's a tissue. <laughs> and as you can see, I'm using it to just blend this vine charcoal, willow charcoal. If I, if I rub harder, I can get pretty much all of the scratchy marks, the individual strokes. So the way I'm doing this particular charcoal drawing, the, the brush strokes, the pencil strokes, are not paramount. This is this is going to be more of a picture than a than a painting than an illustration. It's going to be more illustrative or more realistic. All right. Always, whenever you blow, <laughs> take a good swallow. Make sure you know. Make sure your mouth doesn't have any moisture in it. How many times have I made that mistake? By the way, using the same piece of tissue over and over and over again is actually beneficial. When this when this particular one is uh, completely tattered and worn, I'll start with a new Kleenex, of course. But in the meantime, I like the fact that it, it, a new one picks up more charcoal. A used one 
it does what I want, which is smears it around. Now, I, I do not see my tree marks. Huh. Um, so I, let's do them again. Let's If I turn on the, uh, the light table, let's see if I can still see my trees. Of course, I have to turn off all these outside lights. Oh, yeah, good. I can see them. Just barely. Now, anytime I touch the the paper now, of course, with my fingers, with anything, it, it's going to leave a mark, right? So things get a little bit more touchy, if you will. You know what I want to do? Doggone it. I've never done this before. But this is irritating me to try to draw. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys aren't blinded by the, uh, the light table and bleeding around. All right, I'm taping my drawing down, taping it to my light table. And I'm going to pick up two medium charcoal pieces. I need sharpening. Bear with me just a minute. Sharpening charcoal pencils is a frustrating challenge. The most important thing, let's throw that one down and pick up a different one, is see if, make sure you have a sharp pencil sharpener. There we go, good enough. All right, I'm going to draw with two hands. Nothing, nothing very technical, nothing very difficult. generally following the the pattern I can see that you guys probably can't see but I can see the trees barely through um, I'm assuming that you can first of all you see how, I, how I'm holding the pencils I'm not holding them like this that would be stiff um, and too dark so I'm holding them like this and and I'm twisting them turning them in my fingers like this the whole time so that I'm getting a very organic, branchy stroke, branchy looking uh, mark uh, out of my charcoal pencils. Plus, as you know, if you've ever used charcoal, they go, they get dull very, very, very quickly. So if I were to just hold it like this and draw lines, pretty soon the point on this pencil would be, would be very flat at the, the part that I'm using to draw. Does that make sense? So twisting them like this keeps them sharp. It's sort of like I'm sharpening them the whole time. Every stroke that I'm putting down is having the effect of sharpening the, the charcoal a little bit. I'm drawing branches very lightly across the young man's face because, again, this, he's not actually in this scene. He passed away earlier this year. That's why I'm doing this for the dear mother. And uh, so it's his ghost spirit image, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Sweet concept. No, I, I have no trouble. I'm not going to get theological with the woman. <laughs> I have no trouble doing this image. All right, let's see, turn off all these lights. Let's see what that looks like. All right, I like it. I think I can, well, do I want to, maybe, hang on a second. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll keep it taped down there so I can continue to draw with two hands. But now, new set of tools. I'm gonna to draw with something different. Um, here we go. I have two uh, eraser pencils. One is click like a like a mechanical pencil, and the the lead, so to speak, that the, the uh, eraser comes out. And this one is uh, twist off or unwrap. All right, let's go. So now I am painting. <laughs> the, there, the word came out of my mouth accidentally. I'm drawing very much like a painter. Well, at least the way I paint. 
um, I'm drawing using layers, right? And positive, negative, or that is to say light, dark. Sure, and I'm glad I glad I kept it taped down so I can I can um, accomplish more in less time. Because I can draw with two hands. So I'm going to be going back and forth and back and forth for a while. And I think I am going to, going to go ahead and pretty much finish the, the top part of, part of this drawing because my hand will be, I'm starting at the top working down because when I start working in detail in these faces, uh, my hand will be resting on the paper and I don't want to rest my hand on these trees. Make sense? So I'm, this is a classic case of start at the top and work down so that your hand doesn't smudge all the work that you've already done. So I'll be doing light, dark, light, dark, light, dark several times. If I were counting these as layers, then I just finished layer number three, right? The first thing was gray over everything, then dark lanes, then light bits. Here's a very convenient brush, by the way. I have a smaller one of these in my, you know, in my, in my travel charcoal kit, my bucket, a smaller uh, brush. But since I'm sitting here in my studio, I have, uh, let's go back to medium here. I have uh, a large brush, huge brush right there in my, in my drawer. So I use it. All right. So this would be layer number four gray, black lines, or dark lines, erasing, bolder dark lines. And in a minute, the next thing I'm going to do is going to be a blending stick, blending stub, tortillion, they're called sometimes. Now, I think if I were doing just a charcoal sketch for this project, I would probably leave these trees pretty close to the way they are right now. In my language, my vocabulary, my terminology, a charcoal sketch is more sketchy, <laughs> as, the, as the name may suggest. I allow the... The underlying or rough lines, drawing lines, to, to remain visible. But as I said earlier, I think I'm making the right decision by uh, making this project a little more finished than that. Because I have to work in pretty fine detail to make these faces realistic right right but not too much in my own mind just for what it's worth if you care um i'm 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 not going to take this like on my website danelsonart.com i have some examples of charcoal drawings that are extremely finished glassy smooth photorealistic and this is not going to be like that Oh, look at that. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Dan has never tried to paint a free hand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hello, Mahim Qatar from Qatar. How fun. Uh, Benji, yeah, <laughs> clearly not a regular, true. <laughs> uh, hello, Uncle. <laughs> good, to, good to hear from you. Aureli Barajas. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. 
Uh, yes, you can. Thank you. And thank you, Lori Johnson. Merry Christmas to you as well. Uncle asks, can you see up charcoal drawing? Absolutely. Um, you have to be careful, as always, uh, as with, with pastel or anything else. I mean, as you know, we don't recommend... If you do seal a pastel drawing, I, I'm off topic here just a little bit. You seal it, and then you have you find you have to do a bunch. You have to redo a bunch of work, and then after that second reworking, don't spray it again. So that's what I typically do when I do uh, pastel: draw a bunch, spray, and then draw again, and don't spray. That's about as good as it can get. Charcoal is a little bit tougher than pastel, but not much. Um, two things happen uh, when you spray charcoal. I'm not going to. I'm not going to use fixative on this now. And forgive me. I should have. I should have brought out some samples. But some, some, my my mirror finish charcoal drawings. I do spray those. Um, but anyway, two things happen. The worst is the areas up here where I've already erased some of the charcoal out, if I spray that, those areas will get darker for some reason. And then, of course, it eats up some of the charcoal as well. But it's not as problematic as the the darkening effect that that um, spraying has. So spraying, spraying is a, a very much a mixed bag. Wonderful tool doesn't work as well as you wish. And I, it's, in my experience, any any uh, spraying tool, any sp spraying uh, product, um, a real workable fixative, you know, Krylon uh, acrylic spray, uh, spray varnish, anyway, all of them. They, As far as I can tell, they all have the same problems. And generally speaking, it's a darkening effect. which is, whoops, got some static. There we go. Uh, so the darkening effect is not not one that I particularly enjoy. I can't believe I considered drawing this with one hand. <laughs> as I'm sitting here drawing with two hands, oh man, this would take twice as long with one hand. Okay, so this is layer, by the way, gray, black lines, erase, bolder lines, and now blending. So this is layer five, or phase five, stage five, whichever you wish. They go pretty quickly, don't they? Now next, I'm either going to erase again. <laughs> At this point, I need some, I really need some extra protection. I'm either going to erase again with this kind of eraser, or I'm going to use a liquid seal battery. Some battery life in this one. So this is an electric eraser. Not very good erasers. I mean, the um, battery's kind of weak. I think I have a, there we go. I've got a good strong one here. And of course, what you really need once you have an electric eraser, what you need is uh, is um, a lot of replacement erasers. Oh boy! Now, now I am concerned that I may be doing something. It will just be boring you to tears. The sound is nice, though, isn't it? Kind of like going to the dentist. No, I shouldn't be working way up there at the top, should I? Because I might be doing too much energy up there, is my, my thinking. That would be an easy fix. Just a, one smear with a, a finger would be adequate to diminish all that. One of the problems or challenges with the electric eraser, of course, 
is that it makes all the same shape. That make that makes sense. You, you don't achieve much variety of shape, so I have to be really careful. I don't find myself creating a whole bunch of dots here. Sky dots. The dreaded sky dots. Michael, was that you? It did. I can't remember. Somebody from your era. <laughs> it wasn't Uncle, I don't think. Somebody who's been with me a long time coined the term sky holes gone bad turn into sky dots. <laughs> Probably driving somebody crazy, especially with my uh, with my uh, dentist comment. <laughs> You're okay till I said till I mentioned that. Right. By the way, here's my my smaller brush, my travel brush for getting rid of the, the sawdust, quote unquote. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's go to a bigger tool again. So I think this is layer or stage five. And if I if I play my cards right, if I do it right, um, the final layer or stage up here in these trees will be um, fine feathery lines uh, with a with a sharp pencil. Again, to try to capture the feeling of these tiny little branches. Not, of course, not. I'm not going. I'm not trying to be photorealistic here. That would be a very different uh, style assignment, and so on. That that is not the objective here. I do want to be quite realistic on the faces, of course. But all the rest of this is somewhat impressionistic. The essence of good paint drawing is the same as the essence of good painting, which is making interesting marks. Same essence. And indeed, um, someone perhaps who had never, if you hadn't, seen me or someone else do do a, a quality what i would consider a quality charcoal drawing you may not have thought of of employing uh, an eraser to s such degree so i use all the tools and good drawings of course good charcoal drawings can be done without blending and erasing of course of course that's a very different style very sketchy style well, anyway, that's I'm, I'm inclined to think. <laughs> anyway, Merry Christmas to you all. Hey, let me tell you a little bit of news at, at our house. Uh, last week, my wife and I were out of town. We were in Greenville, North Carolina. That's about an hour and a half from here. With my sister who married my wife's brother. And I'll take just a second for that to sink in. Okay, my sister married my wife's brother. They met at our wedding 40 and a half years ago and got married 40 years ago. So happy, happy, happy. We have a wonderful relationship with them. Anyway, my mom has been living with my sister for the last four and a half years. My mom was 95 years old and she passed away this past Friday. And uh, we were there to help her, to bless her, to accompany her. And I don't want to freak you out and sound weird, but it was a glorious experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome to say sorry for your mom and so on and so on. That's, that's, that's nice and appropriate. But don't say it as if we're like we're wrestling with grief. Hallelujah. We are not wrestling with grief. And some might say, well, you know, having sat there, and I, my, mom, my arm was on her shoulder. My hand was on her shoulder as she breathed her last. 
We don't know if her spirit was still in her body or not. No way to tell, but with her last breath. So that was a great honor to be there. I love my mom. I respect her highly. She, an extremely gifted woman in, in many respects. And uh, some might say, well, you know, now that you've been there when somebody died, don't, don't you kind of wonder if maybe your, your hope for heaven is misguided? My answer is, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I just realized. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, sorry, I haven't, I just realized I can now cuss with impunity <laughs> on my, on my YouTube videos. <laughs> I respect my mom so highly that I would refrain from... <laughs> some coarser language for fear that she might hear me. <laughs> and I'm not afraid of her disapproval. I'm just afraid of, of her disappointing her heart. Anyway, <laughs> just right now, just that, that just struck me right now. <laughs> anyway, the point I was making was, am I worried that maybe she didn't go to heaven? My answer is hell no. <laughs> and now I think my mom's in a place where she doesn't care one bit if I say the word hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that was fun. <laughs> so beware you guys, my channel just turned from from G to PG. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we can have fun now. <laughs> now I have to be careful because I do have one sister who still might be offended. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, shit. <laughs> oh my goodness, hey, I just discovered my microphone's falling down inside my shirt. There, you didn't hear all that because my microphone fell down. Oh man. <laughs> uh, Uncle, I did not get the Goop Medium yet. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron Linton Chambers. Thank you for your kind words. Um, but we are truly, it was... Um, I mean, I could talk for an hour about my mom. She was a, I mean, just whatever. She was a remarkable one. I, th I think I've told you a little bit before. We found out this this week, you know, in her last days. Well, uh, first of all, I'll start. The week before we got there was when she went into hospice. and She died at home. She came back to my sister's home. But she was um, regretting the fact she said to my sister, she was regretting the fact that she wouldn't be able to finish reading her last book, which was a history of England in the 14th century. <laughs> now, come on, I just want that to sink in. I just want that to sink in a little bit. My mom, 95 years old, <laughs> was opining that that she would not be able to finish Barbara Tuchman's, by the way, which I read 25 years ago. <laughs> it's one of the few books that I have already read that my mom hadn't read. Barbara Tuchman's A Distant Mirror, A Distant Mirror History of the the, the uh, 14th Century. <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit about my mom. We also, I started to say, we discovered that she had read through the Bible every year since she was about 17 years old, which means she had read through the Bible 78 times. Now, some of you are just saying that's just that's just an excess of religion. Well, it, it would be if it's done for religious reasons, and religious reasons are basically you do stuff to make the deity like you better, <laughs> and that would be religion. But she did it because <laughs> because she loved God. <laughs> And uh, if you're not impressed by that, let me tell you that just in the last, oh, 30 years, I mean, in the last couple of years, several years, but going back 30 years or more, um, just for fun, so to speak, she would read through the Bible. She read through the Bible in French, German, and Latin, as well as English. <laughs> so here's, 
Here's one of my favorite conversations, descriptions. Description of my mom from a conversation I had with her a couple years ago. I said, I said, well, mom, where did you learn German? And she looked at me like I was, not, and she, not offensively, but just like I was a little bit dumb. <laughs> and she said, in high school. <laughs> and I kind of said, ooh. I studied German in high school. <laughs> Sprechen Sie Deutsch? That's about all I remember. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> and, and then I said, well, Mom, where did you learn French? <laughs> and she looks, looks at me with that same, like, you're not very smart, are you? <laughs> not on purpose. She wasn't being mean. She was sincere as she could be. <laughs> like, are you my son? <laughs> she says, in high school. <laughs> now, granted, she studied French and German in high school, and she remembered it well enough in her 70s, 80s, and 90s that she could read through the Bible in a year in that language. Now, she would brush up, don't get me wrong. She admitted brushing up. But come on, <laughs> for me to read through the Bible in any language besides <laughs> English would require a bit more than <laughs> brushing up. <laughs> and she read through the Bible occasionally in Latin. She wasn't Catholic either. She just read because she loved languages. <laughs> and uh, Mom, where'd you learn Latin? <laughs> you, you see this coming, don't you? In high school. <laughs> we are not dealing with a normal person here. <laughs> uh, all my life, my mom was one of these well, first of all, she spoke the King's, the King's English just a tad better than the King. And so that's, I've talked about that before. What a, what a, what a leg up on, in, in civilization to be able to, uh, you know, to, to pass all my English tests all through school because if it sounded right to me, it was correct. Whereas I'll have other people who, if it sounded right, it was wrong. All right, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to stop there, at least for now. I might come back and do some more erasing later, but... So I think that was that was layer seven, maybe, if I count. Two, that, two, one is this kind of erasing, one is that kind, and they're enough different. The effect is enough different. All right, last thing I'm going to do is um, draw in some, some twigs. And I, might be, I might be a little, maybe, a little more careful with these. Maybe, no, that's too hard. Let's go back to the medium. <laughs> my mom yeah she was rather sickeningly intelligent <laughs> my dad was no slouch he was, he he was been gone 13 years and he wasn't the academic that she was but he was kind of a musical prodigy <laughs> literally <laughs> and an artistic by the way my dad was an artist and a musician and a pastor <laughs> This is not funny. <laughs> Some of you say, why? What's funny? Well, I'm a musician and an artist and a pastor. <laughs> That's crazy. He grew up to be just like me. <laughs> oh, I, d I wasn't even trying, I promise. Well, other than when I was four years old, when I was four or five, when I went off to kindergarten, I did in indeed, I remember thinking I was supposed to be an artist like my dad so that but as far as i could tell that was the end of my conscious emulation of him <laughs> uh so no he was no slouch either but he wasn't the whatever my mom was <laughs> anyway she, i was going to say one of my precious memories of her all my life especially going back to oh junior high school my junior high school she she had paperback books <laughs> I'm just laughing because some of you are thinking, oh yeah, my mom read paperback novels too. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. <laughs> my mom read good literature, <laughs> a.k.a. Shakespeare and Goethe. <laughs> Pronounced, mispronounced by most Americans is Goethe or Goethe. Goethe. <laughs> it's umlauted. See, I did t study German. See, 
anyway, um, but no, she had paperback books always, not far away. Um, like all the birds of North America, all the flowers of North America, probably all the weeds of North America, <laughs> certainly uh, all the trees of North America. And these books were always around and nearby. When we went on vacation, we'd, you know, we'd go on to a vacation to somewhere else in the country. And uh, the bird book and the tree book would go with us. And I remember going through the Northwest uh, Oregon, no, not Washington and British Columbia, through those high, majestic, outrageous Rocky Mountains. Mom with her bird book and her tree book. Look, kids, that's a Douglas fir. Of course, that happened early on, you know. <laughs> And she'd see a tree she didn't recognize and say, oh, let's see what the one, let's see what that is. <laughs> Same thing with the bird. Same thing with the flowers. She was, uh, until the last, oh, th two years probably, she was an inveterate gardener. Anyway, so as you can tell, I love my mama. And it was a real honor to uh, hold her hand, so to speak through the gates of glory, which I, as you can imagine, I believe are real. And, uh, and by, I mean, uh, you know, you know, I don't have to say it. Was she perfect? Of course not. Of course not. You know, did some of my siblings have some issues to deal with? Well, did we all? Yeah, yeah, of course. Anybody who thinks they don't have anything to deal with is, I don't know what, <laughs> they're not, they're lying. <laughs> they're out of touch. So, of course. But, um, way, 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 way more grateful than complaining. Like, 101, 1001. Way more grateful than complaining. And I do, my heart goes out to many, many, many of you who did not have experience anything like mine. I understand that. I hope I'm not bringing you pain. Ah, to heck with that. You should know that there are good mothers and fathers out there. You should. <laughs> anyway, so... It's been quite the week, and of course we didn't get much of anything else done. There were three of us together, three, that is to say three Nelson kids, three of the six. Half of this, one's in Japan, one's in Ohio, and one's in Pennsylvania. So they were not able to be with us. But the three of us had a great time together, lots of Christmas music. We sang a lot. My, uh, all my family is very musical. My, my youngest brother was there, and He's a opera singer. Well, he was an opera singer. He can still sing like scary good. So we sang together, my sister and brother and I. <clears throat> and uh, played a lot of Christmas music. I played my guitar for her several times, whether she was conscious or not. So I'm finally, oh, let me, I, I just talked right through it. Let me back up and just show you the, uh, the tree effect. It's very likely that I'll come in here and do a little bit more specific drawing. I think like I can create some stronger, bolder branches in here. And that's not, that, uh, that's a hard and that's not leaving enough dark. So there switched over to a medium that works very well then some of, i imagine some of these marks that i'm like i'm putting down right now some of them i will come back with a blender blending stub like this i have small ones too and to blend others i'll just leave them 
just the way they are. A little bit rougher. You hear that charcoal singing? <laughs> kind of interesting sound, isn't it? Now it's not doing it. Anyway, that looks quite a bit like like the woods, the forest behind these boys. So pretty happy with that. So if I call this what I'm doing now, touch up. And then that would be, I think it's either layer seven or eight. But because it's two separate steps, drawing and erasing, let's call it. So just as a summary, then I would I would call my treatment, which is again, a, a fairly quick and slightly abstract uh, rendering of trees in charcoal. Uh, required eight different steps. I, I always find it interesting. It's interesting to me how many uh, steps the drawing process might take. Let's go back now to the boy. I'm sorry I should I should look up his name. It was in one of our one of the emails that went back and forth between me and the mom but I forget now what it was. So this is the boy that passed away this past spring. Ooh. Lord help that mother. I mean, let, let's be real. There's a, a world of difference between having your dear elderly, elderly mother die and having your son or daughter die. which even as I say it, I go, oh, wait a minute. We, my wife and I had our daughter pass away this in August of this year. We talked about that. It was not a surprise. It had been coming on for 10 years or more. So there was also very mixed, very mixed feelings, really very much relief for her her suffering was over. One of the most, I don't know what the word is, uh, uh, something amazing, encouraging, amazing, surprising experiences my wife and I have had, and we've had many in the last several years, is uh, after our daughter passed away, she lived the last 10 years of her life, about two hours from here. And uh, it was all, all this was during coronavirus, of course. So we were unable to have a, a normal funeral. We had a memorial service down there where she lives. But uh, she had a number of friends in this, in Raleigh, and where we live. And uh, so we had a, a special memorial service for her here in Raleigh where she was, she grew up and there were about 40 old friends, I would guess. Some, one at least going all the way back to elementary school, others, most from her teenage and early twenties. And we spent much of the afternoon out at a lakeside picnic pavilion and people took turns sharing their memories of melody and um my wife and i were uh, uh, dumbfounded it's almost the, not putting it too strongly at the impact that our daughter 
had had on so many lives. And they, they were specific. It wasn't like, oh, your daughter was wonderful. No, no, no. They said, your, water, your daughter did this and that and this and that. We, we kind of went, she did? <laughs> I mean, don't get us wrong. We liked her a lot. and We loved her. <laughs> but we were, we were just truly like, really? She changed your life? How? Oh, it was, it was glorious. It was absolutely amazing. So anyway, part of the reason I tell you that too is to, I don't know, don't feel like you have to say, oh my goodness, you guys have been through so much. Well, no more than anybody, most other people, much less than many others. That's what I feel like. Much, much less than many other people. <laughs> I think the older I get, the more I value the value of gratitude, the importance of gratitude. If you're not grateful, you're not happy. Nobody can make you happy. Nobody, you can't experience much joy if, you're, if you don't have a bedrock somewhere down deep in the core of your being, a bedrock of gratitude. And of course, it's almost, what's the word? It's a badge of honor in our society now to trot out a litany of offenses as to why you cannot be grateful. And as you can tell by my attitude, get out of here. I mean, I do feel bad for some of your stuff, but nope. You can, I mean, here's one thing. You can always find somebody with way worse than you who is way more grateful than you are. So something's wrong there. It's, there's not, it's an inner thing. It's not an outer thing. Well, my parents were so bad, I couldn't possibly be grateful. I'll get out of here. You can be grateful for something, a whole bunch of some things. Anyway, now I'm, now I'm preaching, so I'll just quit right there. But I'm grateful, and... Plan to stick, keep it that way. I have a lot to be grateful for. I do. So do you. <sighs> One of the things <clears throat> that I would like to accomplish with this face is is I would like it to be. An, Use, using the word not meaning to, I would like it to be ghosted in the uh, in the background up here, as opposed to these faces down here that I'll do opaque. This face up here, I want it to be slightly transparent. So that's why I drew some branches going through uh, his face early on. Hello, Sharon London. Hello, Aaron. Life is so short. Delivered on Wednesday. Oh, my goodness, Uncle. So it did show up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Um, I wasn't here. I bet I know what happened. Well, it came while we were gone. Right? No, if it came here on... Yeah, okay. Yes, my wife and I are gone. So that means I need to talk to my daughter who is here and say, hey, where'd this package go? Because it's Christmas time and all kinds of packages are showing up. So thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you for looking into that. Appreciate it. That looks fun. Uncle is sending me some uh, some some art toys uh, to play with. Um, watercolor... I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Uncle, it'll come back to me in a second. But anyway, a vegetable gel. <laughs> you can mix with uh, watercolor paints. 
Looks like fun. Thank you very much. Going back and forth here between charcoal hard and charcoal uh, medium pencils. After a certain amount of rubbing, after so many layers, the the uh, hard charcoal pencil doesn't have enough tooth in it. The paper doesn't have enough tooth, so not not enough comes off the pencil. So then I have to switch to a medium charcoal pencil which of course then is softer than I want you know so it's right in between <laughs> so yes if they made a something right between hard and medium right now I would be using it handsome young man <clears throat> Aaron asked, did my mother travel a lot? No, not really. Um, uh, she graduated from high school. Well, uh, oh, by the way, my, my funny story a while ago about how much she learned in high school. A little bit of explanation, just a little bit, not much. But in, in Canada, in those days, uh, high school went to optional grade 13. And so she did that, in fact. So she went to one more year of high school than most of us did. And she went from that straight into nurses training. So she was in nurses training for a couple of years. I don't know the chronology exactly. I know it's written down somewhere. Uh, so she was an RN, a nurse. In fact, she was, she was present at one of the hinges of history she was working in a sanatorium. I'll give you a dollar if you know what a sanatorium is. <laughs> um, not, not really. <laughs> My, I'm lying about the dollar part. <laughs> the logistics would be just a little too much. Um, <clears throat> tuberculosis killed. Here's a cheery little fact. Tuberculosis killed one out of seven, seven human beings for tens of thousands of years, maybe longer. Tuberculosis was the health scourge of the ancient world. One out of seven, think about it, 14% of the population dies tuberculosis. And a sanatorium is where they sent people who had tuberculosis to die in comfort, <laughs> sometimes to recover, but not usually. And my mom was working at a sanatorium in Canada. She talks about working the hall. She was, and she was an emergency room nurse much of the time. So I don't know, I don't know how those two things fit together because there's no emergency room at a sanatorium. But anyway, she would talk about the 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 rock in the pit of your stomach when you're working the hall and when you heard someone stop coughing is that that meant they were gone but she was working at the sanatorium <clears throat> when the sulfa drugs and I'm not sure is that penicillin plus penicillin plus something else it's more than just penicillin I believe but anyway when they were invented and shut down the sanatorium um, tuberculosis was essentially eliminated. Amazing. So she was there, so she was part of that hinge of history. And after working as a nurse, she went to Bible school, as many people did at the end of World War II. All this is in Canada, by the way. And that's where she and my dad met. My dad had been 
in the Royal Canadian Air Force Band. <laughs> As he says, we, <laughs> we drove the Germans back blow by blow. <laughs> <laughs> and whereas that is truly a corny joke, my dad was a hilarious person. Anyway, the older he got, the funnier he got. <laughs> it's, it's very funny. Anyway, um, so she went to nursing school and then three years of Bible college. They called it preparing to be onward Christian soldiers <laughs> to the world, which many of their classmates did. My parents instead moved to Michigan. <laughs> I, I was born in Canada, but grew up mostly in Michigan. Um, <clears throat> they, they went to Japan to visit my brother one time. That was 20 some years ago. They went to England for their 25th wedding anniversary in 1976 but we traveled uh, the United States we she and we traveled the United States I get and could be said extensively um, I've been myself I've been in all 48 contiguous states I've been to all the states except Alaska and Hawaii to put it mildly very educated people not formal education. As I said, she was disappointed that she wasn't going to finish her last book, History of the 14th Century. <laughs> she was disappointed with other things too. Don't don't get me wrong. There was her primary work in life in the last oh ten years has been sending cards and letters to hundreds of family and friends. Six children, 22 grandchildren, and I forget now how many great-grandchildren. Scores. Well, maybe not scores. Somewhere between 20 and 30, or 40. Anyway, let's talk about something else, eh? <laughs> this has to be called the Francis Nelson, or as I called it, St. Francis of the Stiff Upper Lip. <laughs> There's a story behind that, too. But never mind. <laughs> ah. Hello, Tumumi from Hell Hell. <laughs> I think you're welcome. Xantham Gum, thank you, Uncle. Okay, good. I will look into it. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, J.M. Watkins. <laughs> I I made reference to your kind <laughs> a little earlier. I apologize to all you activist anti animal killers. I, I uh, honor you. I don't agree with you, but I bless you anyway. <laughs> All right, let's let's start coming down here. And first thing I'm going to do is erase this man's eyes that I drew so badly a little while ago. I think probably I need to end this broadcast. I'm, I'm droning on interminably. <laughs> Dan, this is why people don't watch your videos. <laughs> I know it. I've been told. Don't worry. I've, I've, I've been told if you would do 15 minute videos like everybody else, people would watch. I know it. I know it. But we just, we're just having too much fun, aren't we? Me and my friends. <laughs> Me and my 12 friends. <laughs> oh boy. But I will, um, <laughs> let's, let's show a little something, wisdom, restraint. Before I start drawing the animal we just murdered. <laughs> hey, I didn't murder it. This is not me. 
I have nothing to do with this killing. I do, though. I eat, I eat beef, so I know I'm guilty. I know. I am, indeed. <laughs> we could go on, couldn't we? But no need, no need. Um... So let, that's a good place to stop right there, don't you think? Let me pick you guys up and turn you around because some of you latecomers are wondering who is this who we're talking, who's talking to us <laughs> hours on end? <laughs> we don't even see his face. Uh, okay, hang on. Uh, that would be me. Hey, my name's Dan. <laughs> you recognize me? You recognize my hand, right? <laughs> Thank you for your company. Hey JM, yeah. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna refuse. I don't know if you heard. This woman's son died this past year. This is in honor of him. And uh, if you're hardcore, which you aren't necessarily, but if you're hardcore, then you believe that animal that animal lives are just as worth just as much as human lives. No, <laughs> I won't say anymore. Maybe you're not hard for. Anyway, bless you guys. With that negative statement, we will <laughs> we will bid you a fond adieu. I do have some fun projects coming up that I sure hope I have time to get into. I suppose I could do it after Christmas, but um, one of the things for the last three years, I've done a Santa painting on aluminum. Um, here's my model. This is a friend of mine. And uh, here's some of my paintings from previous years. There's, I don't know if that's Santa 1 or Santa 2. I don't know if that's Santa. I think I did this one first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 2017. This is 2018. Pretty nice painting. Hey, I, if I, and then last year I did something different. I did a, a little scenic painting of Santa delivering a package and the, this is on aluminum also and the purpose of this was actually to lead a paint along it never happened but that was I was going to lead a group of people you know on non painters to paint this follow me stroke by stroke so that's why it's rather stylized and simplistic not not a typical Dan Nelson painting anyway but I do hope to do a painting just for fun just for Christmas and uh, if I do that I'll certainly I'll certainly broadcast that. Thank you for your company today and your comments and your wonderful chats. <laughs> Good night, Michael. Thanks for hanging in there with us. <laughs> Look, 